ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the thing. Maybe. Sometimes. Tell me about this. I want to know more. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. Holy cow. We've had a lot of fun. <laughs> so it is lake fly season at my house right now. Delightful. Which is really unpleasant. <laughs> what are lake flies? They're just these flies that um, are part of the lake ecosystem here where we have sturgeon and the sturgeon feed on the the eggs of the lake fly. Uh, and, oh. um, and they, you know, they don't bite, they don't sting, but they bash into your face <laughs> and they make that whiny, horrible noise. Yeah. And, you know, they're just like big clouds of them. And like when they were little, my kids would walk. They would only cross the backyard during this like 10 day period with two umbrellas, one over their heads and one in front of them, like oh a shield to protect them from wow. the flies. <laughs> Cause that's how bad. It's only a 10 day period. It's about 10 days or so, yeah. But you can't, I mean, you can't go outside. You can't. Like, because you can't open your mouth. Ouch. So, oh. You know, like, it's, ugh. How long does this so, last for? It's 10 or so days, and then it happens again in August, oh, usually man. for a short time. So, what up with the sturgeon? It sounds like they're not doing their jobs. Aren't they supposed to be eating these eggs? Yes, if they ate adequately. But I guess there would they not can't eat them flies. all. <laughs> I know, and I was hoping maybe the weird spring we had with the blizzard in the middle of it would have done something, <sighs> but apparently not. Oh no, man! So. Well, that sounds just delightful. We mm. have some weird flies that hatch here too in the spring, and they just there's usually about like two dozen of them, and they congregate in. Um, small covered areas like porches and patios and they just just circle around and around and around <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm like what is the purpose of this and they're super annoying um they don't like run into you or hit you or anything like that uh -huh. but they're just every time you go outside there's just this circular you know activity going on with these, yeah. these flies and they don't make a sound and yeah. They're just super annoying, and I don't know if it's – like, we didn't have them when we lived in another part of our town, so I'm thinking it's cause, because we're out near Orange Groves. So we're more in a rural area right now, but, yeah, they're super annoying, but not nearly she... as annoying as my lizards that are oh, back there. Oh, yes. Tell yeah. us about your lizards. They're making an appearance because it's yeah. getting warmer. So, ah. yes, and they're making it their main goal to – Ensure I am scared <laughs> out of my mind. <laughs> Anytime you step outside. Yeah. They've stayed uh, out of the elements during the harsh Southern California winters, have they? Yes. Yes. The California winters send them into into hiding <laughs> because it's so cold here. It gets down below 80. They say Ooh. we're out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, take cover. <laughs> oh, these lizards are spoiled. They are. I mean, they, yeah, they're pretty spoiled. And so I was actually cleaning up some stuff at the side of the house that had kind of piled up over the winter that we didn't want to deal with. And of course, disrupted one little fellow's habitat and he didn't like that. And <laughs> ran towards me and <laughs> I'm sure my husband's like he didn't run towards you he was just scared he had nowhere else to go <laughs> I'm like no he ran towards me <laughs> it was clearly an aggressive maneuver <laughs> yeah so yeah I didn't go back there after that that was my <laughs> husband's job <laughs> and ha I think you've said before but your dog doesn't care, right? Because my dogs would chase them. No, she doesn't care. In fact, well, I think because she, we didn't have her for the first five years of her life. She was with a, um, uh, another, a breeder that showed her. So, mm -hmm. and the breeder lived in the desert. So I'm pretty sure she saw a lot of this activity. And so she just could really care less. <laughs> <laughs> She's supposed to defend you. What good I is know. she? No, she's useless. Absolutely <laughs> useless, this one. So, especially when it comes to lizards. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, she stepped on a baby one last year, and the thing survived. I couldn't believe it. Oh, wow. 
She like full on put her paw on it and stepped on it and kept walking. <laughs> Anyway. Well, this is the season in our house where we get we have wasps under an eave of our house Ooh. that's right outside the kitchen window. And so we can mm-hmm. look out, we see them buzzing around going in and out from this eave and we know there's some sort of hive back there. Last year, my husband's solution for this was I'm going to open the kitchen window, take off the screen, spray bug spray in that general direction and then close the window really fast. <laughs> To which I said, I will be hiding under a bed. Have fun with that. <laughs> but he did it, and it seemed to have taken care of the problem. So I can see the wheels turning in his little head, saying that he's going to do that again this time. He knows how to take care of that now, and I will once again be under the bed. Because it sounds to me like this is the sort of thing that ends up with a large number of angry wasps in your home. Oh, yeah. In the house, <laughs> yeah. Right. There was one that every, every now and then we get like a random one in the house that just like takes a wrong turn somewhere and winds up inside. And, you know, they're always very pathetically bumping into the window like, it's right there. It's why right there. there. If I just yeah, keep... why couldn't you spray <laughs> through the screen? Well, I, then you'd have bug spray all over your screen. Well, wouldn't that be preferable to having wasps inside that? Well, my what I would say is why not, you know, get somebody to spray it or go out. Well, I don't know. Yeah, the whole thing is just fraught. <laughs> I would, I would, uh, I, I, it seems like there should be a better way to deal with it than that. But uh, right. fortunately, the random wasps we get in here have pretty much given up all hope by the time they see us. So they're not particularly aggressive. They're just... <laughs> They're just sad. And, you know, you open the door and try to shoo them out and they just, they don't even do it. They're just fixated on the windows. Like, (laughs) yeah. See, again, my dogs would chase. Oh, my girl. Yes. My dog was chasing the wasp. I was having to tell her that cannot, that will not end well for you. (laughs) (laughs) Your nose is just sticking right out there. All tender. Don't be, (laughs) don't be trying to eat the wasp. So uh, it was a little bit of a wild kingdom in our house there for a little while. Poor sad wasp and and (laughs) dog trying to defend the house. And only me between them. Next time I'll have to tell you about my killer bee story. Oh. uh, When we have more time. (laughs) Write that in for next week. (laughs) (laughs) We'll table that one. Because today, should I start us off? So yes. Yeah. Let's buzz right into the into the podcast. As well. <laughs> All right. Well, hello and welcome to Parenting Roundabout, a weekly podcast about the things that parents are talking about, obsessing about, and complaining about right now. I'm Catherine Haleko, and with me today are Terry Morrow. Hello. And Nicole Eridix. Hi there. So today on the podcast, we're going to talk about recent texts on our speed round shout out some stuff we like on the Roundabout Roundup, and do some shameless self-promotion. But first, since when is having a best friend a bad thing? (laughs) Oh, you bully. (laughs) Allowing kids to prioritize one child over another. Yeah, recently in, in kind of trying to dig up some topics for us to talk about on this podcast, I saw a post on Pop Sugar titled... This preschool banned the term best friend. Would you react like this mom did? And uh, it tells the story of a four-year-old who came home from school with a note saying that she had been uh, uh, reprimanded by a teacher for using the phrase, for calling somebody her best friend, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, the mom reacted by saying, what? Basically. So, yes, I would react like that mom did. And yanking her kid, I think, (laughs) Yes, I think she, well, she, she inquired as to why this was a reprimanding offense since it was not in the rule book. Right. (laughs) And was told that the teacher with her years, many years of experience knew that this was the sort of thing that began with the forming of cliques and bullying. And so they were not standing for it. And the mom then said, see ya. Which I think right. I would probably do also. I mean, I have certainly, I have not had this particular experience, but I have certainly had the, and excuse me, Nicole, if I speak bad of your profession, I'm not talking about you personally. But I, I have had not. the, I am an educator <laughs> with many years of experience and you are just what? Some parent? Do what I say. So, <laughs> uh, you know, that alone, just that tone, just as soon as they said, well, in my decades of experience, I would say, bye. So long. <laughs> I don't in think my, I've ever said that to a parent. In my though. months of experience, <laughs> oh, yeah, who says that? 
Yeah. Oh, plenty. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's not said out loud. Sometimes it's said in a facial expression or a sigh. But、mm. I know what they're thinking. Anyway, so we thought we would talk today about this idea that、um, you know, definitely, clicks not a good thing. We would like to find ways to keep kids from being clicky and excluding kids. And I understand that somebody being somebody else's best friend automatically excludes other people, and then it can sometimes be hurtful for a kid who felt that we were all friends, and now those two are best friends, and they're leaving me out. But As adults, is the best way to combat this really to say, "All right, you can't say anybody's your best friend." Does that change the relationship? Does that、no. make kids be less clicky? I have my doubts. Yeah, <laughs> I do too. I mean, and this is the kind of thing that I've told my kids before. Like, you don't have to be friends with someone you don't want to be friends with. Yes. You just have to be kind.、Mm-hmm. You know, you can't be mean.、Um, so that's the kind of that's more what I think we need to be trying to、yeah. teach. Like, and also, you know, people are allowed to have different relationships with different、yes. people, and that doesn't mean that you're completely shutting out others. Right. You know? I mean,、mm-hmm. it's hard for you're talking about four year olds. You know. Yes. And it, that's challenging. Yeah, but they change their mind every. That's true.、Minutes. It's probably true that with four-year-olds, saying best friend is more of an exclusionary thing than a this person and I just really hit it off. Often we just really enjoy each other's company and we have a special bond.、Right. It's like、right. she's my best friend. You're not. You know. And you're so not. That、mm-hmm. may be what the teacher is thinking about, but still. But like you said, just banning that phrase does not change <laughs>、yes. the situation、It、whatsoever. Is, as happens often, I think it's a, a cosmetic fix to a deeper problem.、Mm-hmm. So you can't just necessarily make that fix and then assume that the deeper problem goes away.、Mm-hmm. Right? They'll just call each other something else.、Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Or they'll just learn, you know, to hide things from their teachers and their、so. adults and their.、Life. I guess so, and I mean, if friendship is a difficult thing, we've talked about friendship before, and、mm-hmm. um, you know, it's. I think it's it's nice, to, it's certainly nice to have a best friend, and if you don't have a best friend, it, it's not so nice. But that doesn't mean that we should abolish best friends. I don't think. Ah,、uh, what、right. do you think, Nicole? You've been on the educator end of this. How would you handle this sort of situation? Yeah, I think I'm gonna speak more from a personal and parent <laughs> point of view, <laughs>、um, <laughs> because like I've had two different vastly two vastly different experiences. Because growing up, I grew up in a very small community, and you there, you know, we only had so many kids in our age group, and so everybody paired off into best friends, and it was、yeah. it was not fun. Like it was because if you didn't have a best friend, you weren't. Included、yeah. at all, right?、Uh-huh. Like、mm-hmm. you were, and of course, best friends changed by the week or the、right. day. Or, <laughs> so it was、yeah. this constant. You know, the the term best friend is so loaded for me. Yeah, and、um, so then, it, so I really struggled with that because I I grew up thinking I had to have a best friend. I had to have a best friend, and and if I didn't, then that was just a terrible thing. Yeah, and then I I got to university, and of course my world just exploded because there were all these people, like so many people, and、um, and I wanted to you know get to know people, and and I so I kind of built a larger social circle, and then realized, you know, you can have more than one best friend. That's what Catherine was saying. Like, yeah, people fill certain spots in your life, right? Like, not、mm-hmm. one person can't fulfill everything that you're that you're wanting, and, right?、Um, Or it's a challenge too, <laughs> mm-hmm. and so I quickly developed, you, you know, a large social network, and that still exists in my life today. Like I hate just having that one person to rely on because、yeah. I always feel leery. And and when somebody says to me, "Oh, you're my best friend," I'm like, you know, I feel very leery about that because I'm like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> so when you know, in raising Kristen,、um, we often talked about. And that, the funny thing too is, is that it doesn't matter the term you use. Kids are still going to find a way to identify right 
who their person is, right? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So, um, so I've heard Kristen use you know terms like bestie mm-hmm. and you know BFFL and BFF, and so they just they have all their own ways of identifying. Yeah. Um, you know, regardless of what kind of rule an adult yeah. imposes on them. Um, mm-hmm. But so, yeah, so when I, so in raising Kristen, I always encourage her to keep her circles wide and broad. And yes, if you have something that's close, that's great. But just realize that everybody has a role in your life. And, yeah, um, you know, you can, yeah, you can do some things with one person, some things with, um, with another person. And, and then I, and so then translating that into the classroom as a teacher, um, that was kind of the message that I sent too, is that, you know, at recess time, you don't, you know, go and enjoy one another's company. Like I kind of, you know, I wasn't out there to really monitor it, but that was kind of the message that I tried to send. Like, you know, it's, let's be inclusive and there you go. Be inclusive. <laughs> inclusive. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and welcome people. And, and, you know, and the, my daughter, I think is actually, I think she's pretty, you know, I think she's sort of taken that message or like to, I feel like she has because she's got very wide circles and, um, you know, she's, she doesn't really, she's pretty welcoming, which is really neat to see. Like I, she doesn't, um, she's not very judgy and not very exclusive with one person. So I mm-hmm. feel like there's, she's heard what I've said <laughs> over and over again. <laughs> so, I mean, sometimes she'll limit and be like, oh, I don't have that one close friend. Yeah. I can have everything too. And um, I said, well, you know, we've got lots of different people in your life and perhaps, you know, like it'll likely be your husband or your partner that yeah. you know, one day will be that one person for you. But have, have friendships is kind of the definition or the way friendships are ex- executed changed at all in the social media age, do you think? Because people have now such a, kids have now such a much wider access to a much larger group of people and seem to mm-hmm. be kind of in yeah. constant comment with that as opposed to having your best friend over and then you play together all day or you have a sleepover and you have that one-on-one contact. Everything seems to be so much more group-like. Yeah. You guys yeah. find that with your kids? My yeah. kids, uh, friendship was always kind of a fraught thing, so I don't quite feel like I've had a typical experience. I think Kristen, yeah, like she has her moments, and but I think for the most part, social media has helped her maintain her friendships because she can be very lazy too and not <laughs> just kind yeah. of curl up in a ball and <laughs> <laughs> and shut the world out. So social media encourages her to maintain her friendships. Yeah, and has given her wider exposure to different people. So if one person is doing, you know, not being um, there for her or what she's wanting at that time, then she'll turn to another person. But, and thankfully, knock on wood, we really haven't been on the bullying side of things with these Mm -hmm. friendships. Um, But yeah, I feel like it's forced her to be more sociable. (laughs) But I don't know. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I don't know, Catherine, what about with your daughter? Yeah, I mean, I think she she has a pretty wide group, too. Um, and it's interesting how, you know, she has, she calls it the friend group, you know, and there's a, there is a, a delineated <laughs> like, group and a number of people that are considered, uh, that consider each other their friend group. Then she also has other friends outside of that, for sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, um It's interesting to me that they, like, spell it out and say (laughs) it and, you know, like, it's, uh, but I think it's fracturing a little bit because I I notice it's not as prominent in her social life as it, as it once was, like, this specific group of people and, and, you know, pieces and parts of it are Mm -hmm. still, still there, but there's other people kind of coming in and out, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think. Like with Kristen, it's funny because they they just call themselves squads, right? Yeah. And so they, yeah. and they identify themselves um, through the social media uh, through their texting chat group. So she mm-hmm. has her 
lunch group of friends and they're the ones that sit together at lunch and they sit on the big open field at lunch so they call themselves field girls <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> so they have a group chat for field girls yeah and then she's got another group of friends that um are in her uh ap u.s history class so they call themselves you know the a push group or whatever it's uh-huh, called right and so she has these different yeah. chunks of <laughs> squads my, my daughter's the friend group is their their group text is called the graveyard of plants <laughs> <laughs> because they they talk about making plans and then they don't actually don't do it, it. <laughs> But do yeah. you think that social media has kind of made people have a thicker skin about always being included, you know, because it, like you always see, or maybe kids are better about this than adults, but you, you know, you'll see that people have gotten together and you weren't there. Mm-hmm, and yeah. do you think kids just don't care about it as much or do they notice and feel bad about it but stay quiet or you know what I mean I just I wonder if it's if because it's so common you know to see right other people making plans that maybe you're not in that they kind of just have developed a better attitude about it than Hmm. yeah maybe I would have had (laughs) yeah I know right I know that's funny because I feel Like with Kristen, if she sees, there's a few people that she's, I I guess she would have her inner circle. I mean, I, you Mm -hmm. know, she has her, her group that she does most of her activities with. Mm -hmm. Um, If she sees them making plans without her, I think she probably feels a little bit of a, you know, tinge, you know, like twinge in terms of um, feeling left out. But it doesn't, you know, she doesn't, maybe that's happened once or twice. And she sees people who are part of her squads, but not, she's not necessarily tight with, and she's not, it's not that big right, of a Right, then she's not going to worry about that. Yeah. Yeah. But it certainly has changed the landscape. That's, I mean. Yeah. Because they are in constant contact. Right. Yeah. So. I would love I that know. when I was a Because we, we had a thing um, with a girl that, how am I going to put this? Somebody was involved in an activity and some of the kids would get together outside of that activity Mm -hmm. and, you know, it wouldn't always be all 10 of them at once or whatever. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it would be two or three. Yeah. And it seemed like the mom was more upset about times when the group didn't happen to include her child than Um. the child. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah, that like the kid me. was like, whatever, I understand that, you know, it's not going to be a party of 12 at all times. <laughs> right. But the mom was like, how dare they leave my kid out, you know? I would have yeah. been the mom thinking that, but I wouldn't have been saying it. I would have been laying down in a dark room thinking, why aren't they including my <laughs> <Right>. kid? <laughs> yeah. But we had one occasion like that where she, uh, she was expecting to be invited to a birthday party and she wasn't. Mm -hmm. Her and her friend weren't. And then um, this is the other thing about social media, too. It's actually given, you know how some people are better at, they're not so great on the the spot things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you have like this, you know, the opportunity, obviously, to bully and use your words hurtfully. But then I Mm -hmm. also think that the girls are learning to be more direct as well. And yeah express their feelings because sometimes you just can't feel like you can say that in person right Mm -hmm. so it's it's certainly given them a voice that they may not have had Uh in terms of being a little bit more direct and saying you know that hurt my feelings yes um yeah so that's what happened so Kristen and her friend sent these other girls a message saying you know that hurt my feelings to see that (laughs) (laughs) yeah but you know um and so they had a conversation and actually it was like, wow, this is kind of like a really, you know, I don't even think adult women would have this conversation. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. So it worked out. That's cool. So sometimes, you know, it's not the root of all evil, right? <laughs> right. right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Do you guys ever find yourself encouraging your kids to include somebody who's who they've excluded or 
um, you know, thinking in terms of, of this, you know, trying to ward off cliques and, and excluding kids. Is there ever a time when you say, oh, you know, why don't you ask so-and-so to go? Yeah. Or do you let yeah, them I've done do that. their own thing? Yeah, I've done, I've done it, especially if it's part of a team, you know, you're inviting 80% of the hockey team. Like, yeah. you got to just invite everybody. You can't, <laughs> yeah. you can't just do everybody except one or two. Right. Like, no, right. that's not, that's not okay. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Right. So, yeah. Or I've talked to my kid, you know, before, maybe before a friend comes over. Um, if it's going to be two friends or if it's going to be, or like my son had a birthday party this year and it, he invited a diverse, <laughs> <laughs> you know, he invited friends from, from his elementary school and friends from his hockey team and friends that he's made since middle school. And, you know, so yeah. it was, they didn't all even know each other. Yeah. So I was beforehand, I'm like, you know, you need to be you need to be paying attention and making right. sure that nobody's left out. Yeah. You know, like, and in informing the invitation list, I did also say like, well, if you're going to invite this one, make sure you invite somebody else that they know, oh, right. Well, you know, That's right. a good point. so that they have somebody to hang out with. Cause you know, obviously, you know, my, my son, the birthday child can't be mm-hmm. everywhere. Um, right. And at once, so you can't just yeah. go hang out with your favorite friends and leave these other people you have invited exactly. just kind of hang in there, yeah. right? And I mean, I don't. I mean, I know that Kristen has her moments, but I also feel like she has more inclusive moments than not. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, she she was telling me the other day that um, a boy in her class who is very, you know, very attentive to his studies and is very um you know he just is very concerned and conscientious about his grades and so he I guess he he created this great big review package for their um AP U.S. history exam Mm -hmm. and somebody asked him if he would start selling it so he did so he went to um Staples or Office Depot and yeah you know printed off like 30 of these packages and then started selling them. It was a great gig. Yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I'm sure the kid made a fortune. And um, so Kristen had asked him late in the game if she could buy one off of him. And um, just to backtrack too, I mean, he, he was just, and he was the kind of kid. And she told me later on that, you know, people really give him a hard time and are sometimes not so nice to him because he's, you know, he's obviously uh, more in tune with school than a lot of his peers are. Yeah. And they see that. And uh, so anyways, they treat him a little differently uh-huh. and not so nice sometimes. So fast forward, Kristen's asking him for a package and he says, well, you know, I've only got one left and people are asking me for it. And Kristen says, well, okay, I can pay you more for it. <laughs> you know, she's <laughs> trying to strike a deal, right? And he goes, you know what? No, he goes, I'll just give it to you because, you know, you've always been nice to me and I remember that. Oh, so, wow. Yes. Yeah, so you he, know, someday he, that kid is going to own a, you know, trillion dollar corporation and uh, I know. So I want to keep yeah. in touch with him. I know. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he remembers, so, he said it. That's right. That's right. So I feel like, you know, she's obviously doing a good job. Yeah. You know, that's at certain cool. Times, so that's very yeah. nice. Makes yeah. you feel good to hear it. Yeah, it does. It's weird. Yeah. So, on that note, <laughs> I don't know, Terry. Do you do you have anything to add to? Like, <sighs> Not too hair? much on this topic. Yeah. Unfortunately. What about I, your son? Does I, he text? I, does he? My kids are on the excluded end. Of the, <laughs> they're the ones who are not the best friends. But uh, but your son had quite a few friends in high well, school. Well, th- this is a phenomenon of self-contained classes. Yeah. Is that everybody goes, you go through school pretty much with exactly the same kids year after year after year. And so, you know, and you invite the entire, the, it's a small class. So you invite the entire class to your birthday party. So basically you kind of have this built-in set of friends and there's not a lot of going outside the the box, you know? So in right. that way, he does have, you know, a, a, a friends he's known for, you know, most of his schooling. Every now and then somebody drops in or drops out, but 
but it's sort of it's sort of artificial. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's not really mm-hmm. self selected. It's you've been with these kids for ten years. All the mothers know each other, so we plan things together for them to go and do. Um, so there's not it's not like the kids are making up the list particularly. I'm sure there are hurt feelings and exclusions, but although he does have friends, I feel like um, it's not necessarily. A natural sort of process. Uh, whereas with my daughter, she, you know, I always sometimes feel like she had trouble with friends, but there, she had like, for a certain amount of time, she would be very close friends with somebody, and then it just ended, boom, done, no contact. <laughs> and we hmm. never saw her again. <sighs> uh, really? And then something else would come most of the time, and that would be really intense for a while, and then it would end. So right now we're kind of between that. And so it's really, really hard. There's not a mm-hmm. lot of, there's not a lot of second and third tier people just kind of yeah. hanging out, getting together, doing stuff. It's, it's a hundred percent and then zero. Right. So, and I feel there were, there were certainly situations while she was growing up where I felt like calling people up and saying, how dare you not invite her? What's the matter with you? <laughs> I yeah. didn't, I didn't, but I wanted to, I said it. I yelled at those girls in the shower. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. uh, so I have, you know, I, I don't think that just saying don't say best friend solves that problem. Right. I think no. it's, I think it's a human problem. I don't think it's even a contemporary problem. I think it's just, you know, you identify the kids who you feel, people who you feel are your, uh, tribe and the ones who aren't, you have no use for Right. You know, it's hard to just say, you know what, some kids are better than others at, at reprogramming with that. But even then, God, I remember this one time, very, I was talking to this very, very nice mom of this very, very nice young woman in high school. And this was after my daughter had been out of high school. It was a band. We were in community bands. So these are all band people. And, and this mother was saying that she felt so bad for her daughter because there was this kid who wasn't very popular and it kind of latched on to her. And she was nice to him because she's a nice girl. But really, this kid was pushing it too much. And I was thinking to myself, dang, that was my kid. And I know who the nice girl who was nice to her was. And I bet her oh. mother was saying the same thing. It's mm. like, you know... <laughs> It's, yeah. it's real. I didn't say it, but it was just on the tip of my tongue that, you know, yeah, anyway. So it's yeah. fraught. It's yeah, very yeah. hard and it doesn't get easier when they're adults either. So. Well, the social circle kind of tightens up, right? Like it kind of gets yeah, less well, it's, less. Yeah, I mean, it depends. You, it, it's, you no longer have school providing a constant access yeah. to people. So mm-hmm. then unless you're working someplace where you get along with the people and, and get a, a click there, there's not so much, or are you a real outgoing person joining clubs and organizations and book club and this and that? It's really hard. There's not an automatic, yeah, uh, social group once you get to be a young adult. So, and it's Isn't easy that like to get a Tinder for friends or something. <laughs> <laughs> Throwing right. out another business idea, folks. I think no. there actually is, though. There might I be. That- I think Amazon Prime needs to get on it. That's I, I continue to say. <laughs> You go on Amazon, you say, need a friend, and then, like, you know, two days yeah. free shipping, somebody <laughs> yeah. knocks on your door. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, and I mean, the hard thing is I know there's, like, a ton of other kids who feel exactly the same way and are sitting in their house, playing with their computers all day, watching TV, mm-hmm. not getting out, not meeting people. How do we get those kids to meet each other? Yeah. Moms, if you got one of those in the northern New Jersey area. Right. Call Hit me. me up on Twitter. Mm-hmm. We'll we'll contrive some way for our kids to meet. <laughs> right? I might my friend and I talk about that with um boyfriends for our yeah. daughters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we need to be like matchmaking or something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Helping them. Ay, ay, ay. Speaking well, of kids. Yes. Oh, and dogs. <laughs> speaking of kids communicating through electronic means. Yes. Right. <laughs> Shall we move on to our speed round? Let's do. Sure. Because I don't, there just really isn't an answer for that. There isn't, and it's making previous, me sad, so. <laughs> previous topic. <laughs> move along. <laughs> Moving on. I don't know if this is like, you know, this one will make you sad or laugh or cry, or but <laughs> <laughs> what, what was the last text to or from your kids is um, 
our topic for this speed round. And um, yeah, may make you laugh, cry, all of the above. <laughs> Shake your head. <laughs> Go into a dark room. I don't know. <laughs> Catherine, do you have a, anything you'd like to share with us? <laughs> well, of course, my last, friendly. my last one um, from my daughter was her saying thank you to me. But that was because she said, can I come after school and get some money? <laughs> <laughs> and to because she needed it to get something to cheer up a friend so um, right. so yeah hers was can I get money and I said yes and she said thank you so <laughs> but as I told you guys before earlier in this thread was her texting me from school can I call you which you know, right <laughs> might as well just like <laughs> right reach into my mouth and grab my throat and just <laughs> yeah. squeeze so yeah. yeah she's she's okay but that do you, you know, do you not... go into panic mode when you get a text like that oh my you... yes like yeah. just just call <laughs> like, don't ask <laughs> me if you can call just call <laughs> oh. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So. Or when they text you and they say, Mom, I need to talk to you, and then nothing. Yeah, then, yeah, that's, yeah. That's <laughs> and then you're like, what? what? And then finally when they get back to you, they're like, oh, you know, I had a class. Or <laughs> Yeah, it was, not, it was nothing. Like, oh, <laughs> you don't anyway. understand how this works. <laughs> so you were, you, were, you were called upon to, to give her money. Yes, <laughs> that was the final outcome of that particular <laughs> conversation. Yes. How about you, Terry? What was your... Well, my last yeah. text uh, to my son, he uh, I mentioned here before that he works at a big football stadium by us during games and concerts and other events. And then he calls us when it's time to come pick him up, oftentimes quite late at night. So as the day goes on, and it's been many hours, I always... You know, it's like I want to text him to check on him, but I don't want him to be looking at his phone while he's working. I don't want him to get in trouble. So I wait and I wait and I wait and I wait. And then I'll send something like, you okay? Just a little, you know, mm -hmm. little thing. Not, you know, not not anything big. If he, if he wants to skip it, it's okay. But then he, he texted back uh, telling me what time we could come pick him up. So that was, that. that's a fairly common thing on our on, on my text conversations with him. Also, sometimes if he's in his room and not answering when we yell, I will text him and say, come out. Yeah. Which works very well. <laughs> That's a common text. With my daughter, well, the very last text she sent me were a bunch of pictures that she downloaded from my Facebook and then texted to me. I don't quite understand. Mm -hmm. uh, but before that, we had, a, we had a big argument the other day and she went to her, she went to a, a practice at the church and uh, we had a big argument, and then of course I text, you know, little heart, you okay? Sorry. <laughs> and uh, she didn't text me back, but later on it was okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes she'll text me back, and she'll apologize too. But text, text apologies, yes. not an uncommon thing here. Right. <laughs> <laughs> As it's like, you know, don't be mad the entire time you're out of the house. Mm -hmm. But yeah. uh, can't have that. <laughs> this is the way. This is the way we subtly and quietly apologize. <laughs> yeah. Little art. Little greater sign three going through the going through the. Well, interwebs. I got one at eleven thirty-two this morning. Yeah, from my daughter mm -hmm. with a picture of her face, a close-up picture <laughs> of her face. Yeah. <laughs> Looking down at the camera, she's obviously sitting at her desk, uh -huh. taking oh a picture of her face, <laughs> and she says, "Mom!" Exclamation mark. My makeup wasn't blended this morning. <laughs> <laughs> and then a sad face. <laughs> I said, um, "I don't notice it. I don't see it." <laughs> and she says, "Is my lip okay?" <laughs> <laughs> and then I said, "Yes, you look gorgeous." <laughs> okay, thanks. She says, and that's that. <laughs> so you know, big issues when you're 17. Yeah, mm -hmm. I guess. <laughs> and then the last exchange I had with my son was um, <laughs> on Mother's Day, and it was I actually texted him at 11:34 a.m. or p.m. A.M.? Okay. Yeah, A.M. 
And I said, Josh, <laughs> exclamation mark. <laughs> and he says, sup. <laughs> and I said, I'm waiting for you to wish me a happy Mother's Day. <laughs> he says, happy Mother's Day, Mom. <laughs> so, Fishing yeah, for just, Mother's Day greetings mm-hmm. is yeah. Nicole. I had to prompt him because, you know, he's a 20, almost 22-year-old boy. So you boy. have to say, like, isn't there something you want to say to me, son? Right. <laughs> Is it a special day of any sort? Oh, no, I'm far more direct. You're direct. Yo, say Happy Mother's Day now. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you're, it's too late. It's late morning. It should have been done first thing this morning. Mm-hmm. Hangover or not, get up and wish your mother. Your card <laughs> hasn't come in the mail yet. <laughs> so, <Okay. laughs> yes, that was the last text for my kids. So. Scintillating communications with our children. <laughs> And remember, you can hear a new speed round every Wednesday through Friday. And now we bring you some of the things we've read or seen or used recently that we want to shout out and share with you. Should I go first? Go ahead. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so this is an instance where a TV commercial actually made me buy something. Hey. Um, Hey. And I think it was a TV commercial. And Orida, as in like the potato people uh-huh. has this product now called just crack an egg and which is <laughs> kind of like the i can't believe it's not butter school of product naming um anyway it's just a little plastic tub and it comes with like chopped up um potatoes and some other veggies and sausage and cheese inside the cup and you take those out and crack an egg, just crack an egg inside this <laughs> thing. And then you put the um, other foods back in and you microwave it and you get like kind of like a scrambled egg or omelet in a cup. Um, oh. So it makes like a nice little breakfast and I have been enjoying it. And so has my son who it's hard to get him to eat like a... I mean, my daughter's even worse, but my son is, yeah. you know, I'm always trying to get him to eat something other than just like a bowl of cereal. Like I want him to have a little more, you know, protein or something <laughs> in his morning. Yeah. So, um, so he's been drinking, he's been eating these. Nice. Wow. There you go. Just crack an egg. Sounds tasty. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta check it out. <laughs> and how about you, Terry? Do you have anything? Yeah. Well, I, um, I've been trying to set some new habits and uh, as one does. And of course, any time now when you try to start doing good things in your life, you want to find an app that you can play with sure. to do it. So I thought about Habitica. Habitica. Is that the one you recommended, Nicole? Yeah. 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 Went on the app store to get that. Tried to log into it. Didn't want to log into it through Facebook because Catherine said not to do that. <laughs> so oh, right. <laughs> so I tried to log in with an email and a password, and it just kept saying couldn't reach the server, couldn't reach the server, couldn't reach the server. So finally, in frustration, I turned to a different habit program called Good Habits, which is extremely basic. It's basically, I mean, you just write down your habits, you say which days of the week you want to do them, and it marks the day on which you did them and tells you how many times you've done it in a row. So I am enjoying that for the moment. Might try the other one eventually, but uh, this is this is just, uh, you know, giving me just that tiny bit of pressure to do things so that I can check them off. On the app, hmm. um, because just taking good care of myself is not enough motivation. No, needs more. <laughs> <laughs> I may need to get the paying version. I may, may need to get some in-app purchases so so that I have a little skin in the game. You know, once you've paid money, then it's really yeah. important. Which is mm-hmm. why Weight Watchers works better when you're a member than when you're not. As my scale will tell you. So. Uh, <laughs> And how about you, Nicole? What do you have? So I was at Nordstrom Rack a couple weeks ago. Uh huh. And I was looking, just, you know, browsing, and um, came across these jeans. And I'm not like a big jean person. I find buying jeans absolutely the worst experience of my life because jeans just never really seem to fit <laughs> my body type. Uh huh. <laughs> and lo and behold, I saw a brand of jeans I'd never seen before, and the tag on it promised 
the ab solution fit for every curve. Ah. <laughs> so okay. I quickly, you know, hustled them into the um, change room and they are fantastic. I love them. Mm. They are so like they're just they've got this elastic waisty kind of thing and They've got like, you know, a little lift here and a little lift there <laughs> <laughs> and there's no gap in the waist and yeah, I just, I love them. So they're called nice. Democracy. That's the name of the company and you can't buy them right on, on their site, but you can get them at, apparently they're on Amazon huh. and Nordstrom Rack and there's a bunch of other places where you nice. can buy them, but um, they're not the cheapest. They're not on the budget rack, but <laughs> they're not like super super over the top either so okay i think they're worth the money though interesting mm. mm-hmm. and uh now for our final segment today we're going to do a little shameless self-promotion and direct you to some things on our sites that we think you should take a look at what do you have this week nicole <sighs> well i haven't really written anything new um the last couple of weeks so you know i just encourage listeners to Go to Amazon and Google Inclusion in Action. <laughs> <laughs> That's my shout out this week. And, you know, write a review, even if you haven't read it. Give write her some stars. That's actually a really good, yes, please write a review if you have read the book. Uh, uh, or even yeah. if you have. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Pretend you know what it's about. You do. It's about inclusion <laughs> in action. Yeah. There you go. It's not about inclusion sitting still. It's about inclusion in action. That's right. Says it all right there in the title. Mm -hmm. How about you, Catherine? You always have something. I do have another thing at Highlights. It's about um, picky eating, in particularly in babies, and how it is like a temperament thing. It's not just a baby who doesn't like any kind of food. It's a baby who doesn't like new things um ah. so you know don't feel like it's a personal attack when, when your baby <laughs> won't eat anything um it's really oh. more of a temperamental trait so it was it's based on some research so kind of interesting yeah oh. all right well that sounds good oh well, and since we were speaking of uh of giving uh reviews to nicole's book um I, I also haven't written anything this week, so let this be a reminder that it would be very cool if you could give some reviews to this podcast yes. on iTunes or mm-hmm. some stuff, even just some stuff. Just throw us some stars, man. It doesn't take long. It would be very nice to know that people are listening and enjoying and uh, to give us a little more visibility. And if you don't want to do that, even just, you know, recommend us to somebody else. Retweet one of our tweets and share it with people who you know, you know, mention on Facebook that you're listening to this. Uh, We really enjoy doing this and uh, we really feel stupid doing it if we think nobody's (laughs) listening to it. So (laughs) lots of ways (laughs) we can help. Throw us a little appreciation, (laughs) will you please? We would appreciate it in return. Well, that's it for this week's episode of Parenting Roundabout. We hope you enjoyed it and that you'll join us every week. You can listen to podcast episodes on Radio Public or download them from Apple Podcasts. Please subscribe so that you get all of our podcasts and mini podcasts. You can also follow us on Twitter where I am at Nicole Erdix, Catherine is at C. Haleko, and Terry is at Mamatude. You can also follow the podcast on Twitter at Roundabout Chat and look for us on Facebook, Pinterest, Tumblr, YouTube, and Instagram too. Best of all, stop by our podcast page at ParentingRoundabout.com and read recaps, find links on everything we've mentioned, and talk back in the comments. Thanks to John Morin at JohnJMorin.com for providing our in and out music. And I wish everyone a great week. <laughs>